Hey guys, how's it going? Say al khair, ahlan wa sahlan. My name is Mustafa Darwish. Mustafa Darwish. I'm Aslan Masri. I'm Egyptian and I immigrated here to the United States back in 2008. Uh, I'm a painter and one of the things that I'm doing for you guys and for all the El Bustan Seeds viewers and organization is a painting specifically just for you guys to watch me go all through the process. So uh, let's see what I got, right? So let's go. Alright guys, so as you saw that literal teaser of the painting that I was working on, um, I decided to just show you a real quick view of what my tools are trade, right? And a little bit of my studio and how I did or performed this painting. Um, so this is what I use to do the painting. This is my palette right there. I think in Arabic it's called paleta. It's not an actual Arabic word, but it's a derivative from French and English. Um, I got my brushes and I have varieties of brushes um, in Arabic they are called forche, uh, forash, gamma, okay singular, forche, uh, uh, pruler is forash and yeah I have a palette knife, sikina, sikina paleta sikina, maybe it has another name I'm not sure but maybe you can tell us if you are interested by contacting us through the Elbustan seed and tell us what do you think this might be called in Arabic. So, palette knife is what helps me actually by mixing colors. This is my color swaps. I use something called open palette, which is pretty much the most chromatic and saturated colors. Alwan. In Arabic, colors are called alwan. So, for example, yellow, asfar. I have two yellows. I have two red, ahmar. And blues, I have two or three blues, but usually two blues are fine, which is Ezra. And those are the primary colors, right? Um, the reason why I use two different colors of each is that both are temp uh, different temperatures. Alwan uh, Harareya, different um, um, in the temperature. So let's say, for example, yellow, I will have Lone Barid, a colder color or a cold color of yellow, and a warm yellow, Lone Harari, okay? Uh, warmer yellow same thing goes for reds colder red warmer red blues colder blue warmer blue and this is where i do the magic so uh you uh, oh before i forgot i have turpentine terpenoid right terpentine and i use this as my medium and at the same time also to clean my brushes i need to do so so i can have clean pure color and I will show you all of that in my demo actually I also have my oil colors just to show you and my oil medium itself so those are just samples right so I squeeze that out into the palette of course I know you know that and I have my oil sometimes that I use just to give me a little bit of viscosity in my movement and just makes everything much more powerful and potent that's walnut oil zate right all right, so right now I'm gonna take you to see my painting where I'll discuss the idea behind my project, behind the painting, as well as you're gonna watch me do the practice. It's only about an hour that is sped up, so hopefully you guys would enjoy it. All right, let's go and see. So as you guys can see, this is a painting practice. <clears throat> I am pursuing a certain project where I talk about uh, uh, my culture and where I grew up at, which was in Egypt. Um, I was looking at my older photos and trying to get a sense of what is going on, how did my old house look like, um, and trying to stitch paintings together in order to reach a conclusion where maybe I'm able to figure out how the house looks like. And while doing so, I think one of the best practices is that I need um, um, to study the painting and study that you know, like how would I approach it, uh, what style, um, how would my project look like at the end. And practicing everything, like from colors to values to just simply painting and having fun. Um, and um, trying to figure out how would I go about my bigger picture. 
And for me, the best way to go from the bigger picture is to do a lot of small practice paintings. Um, so this is a quick painting that took me around probably an hour and a half, two hour stops. And um, in the painting, you can see that I am relying a lot on just focusing on shapes without any details, right? Uh, focus on, on shapes, colors, values, of course, um, a sense of contrast where it's, let's say, to explain what is a contrast is that when you see something very dark or very light and behind it is the opposite of that value, the extreme opposite. Um, and there's, a, of course, a lot of uh, nuances and um, uh, differences in, in, in contrast. It could be from mid-tone to a slightly higher and so on and so on. Um, but in general, that those are my basic focus. Uh, shapes are very important to me because shapes dictate um, how I paint by masses, especially if it's a practice, if it's a quick painting that I want to just be easy on myself. I do not need to put every detail. I do not need to put faces. I do not need to put um, um, expressions and so on and so on. Uh, and that in itself also that mindset helped me by creating um, um, a little bit of a unique style for this project I'm pursuing. It's that you look at something, you do not fully understand who are those people, but it resembles my family, it resembles my mom, it resembles a kid, and so on and so on. So it's also a detach the sense of human um, in the picture, and it makes it possible that this person could be anyone, right? You do not, you cannot tell who exactly it is, it might be this person, it might be not, and thus put you in a, um, um, a situation where you're like, oh, maybe I, I know this person, maybe not. Um, so this is like a combination of everything that I was thinking of when I was doing this project in general. As you can see, um, I am moving a bit by bit, uh, piece by piece. I try to start at a let's say a single point and then from there I try to expand and paint the surroundings so as you can see right now I am painting uh, someone in the back I think this is this is supposed to be my uncle and I started from his shirt and gradually started comparing right I did the black background and then I compare it to the shirt compare it to the hand and so on and so on um, right now I am mixing this color which is uh, a little bit close to skin tone and supposed to be the background and I do not care that much about putting details or what's going on I just care about the big shape in itself um, and massing in this shape just to fill the voids and then if I wanted to correct them later I can um, and then slowly and gradually start to shape things like for example right now I was trying to shape the face of my younger brother and um, that's the idea of this process or the project is that I am easy going on myself. I do not have to put every possible details. I do not have to finish everything perfectly before I move on, but rather put simple shapes, simple values, simple color. And throughout time, I keep on adjusting little by little and slowly for sure until I reach the goal where I'm like, huh, I think this is, this, this painting could be slightly finished. And, um, that that's it that concludes the practice so in this part I'm showing my palette and how it's organized and how I usually mix my paint as you can see I try to move through the spectrum so my colors go from lightest light to darkest dark and get back again into the same saturated value as much as possible so from left to right yellows to reds to blues and it keeps on progressing until that's it it reached the darks and then i put my neutrals on the side and on the left i put white mostly um in this in here my my biggest things that i would like to suggest or say is that keep your brushes always clean use two different brushes at least one for darks one for light so if you're dealing with skin tone anything that is lighter values that, that doesn't require any darker values <clears throat> from mid-tone and up use a brush for it and then for the darks use a completely separate brush always keep your brushes clean every mark you make wipe it down um, 
And that's a good practice for you having a good mark making and control, especially when you lay out your shapes and masses. So this is something that I highly emphasize on. Keeping your palette clean also help you with your thinking on how to put your colors and where to put them and um, how you can look at the painting, right? Um, and aside from that, in general, some of the biggest things I like in general is playing with colors. I don't have to depict everything accurately. Thus, the painting is always very loose, very abstracted, very emphasized on the fact that it's very neutral. There is no identification of anything. It's just big shapes that has a little bit of identifications of what could be surroundings, what could be humans, objects, and so on and so forth. The last thing I would like to mention are my materials. As you can see, the surface I'm using is a mylar or a yopo paper. It's made out of plastic, a villain. It absorbs the paint really well, and at the same time, also, a lot of paint will stay on top and afloat. And that gives me a lot of wide array and range of paint application from very transparent to very opaque and thick paint quality. I love the surface and I highly recommend it. As for my brushes, I use soft brushes. I think it's I'm very comfortable with using those soft brushes. Especially on a plastic or a miner, it won't damage the surface and at the same time won't find me as much or won't leave a texture. Alright, I think I am done with my painting here. I think I can conclude that it was not a bad practice at all. I was able to have a lot of successful moments. It taught me a lot about the painting, so in the future I can reapproach it again. Or even, it could be just a painting of its own. A good, solid, fast practice. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at Elbistan's email list. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have a great day.